It's been one year since my last video, so I wanted to give you an update on the state of development and what kind of new features there are in Pixel Art Academy. Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Matej Jan, you can call me Retro. This is Pixel Art Academy 102 two this time. Two years ago it was the last episode of Pixel Art Academy 101 where we finished with the admission chapter, the chapter one of gameplay of Pixel Art Academy, my adventure game about learning how to draw. It's been time to pop up the number and 102 which will be the new season of videos of how, what kind of features there are in the game, what it's all about and we're going to get into learning materials this time. There are three main pillars of Pixel Art Academy. The main one is the adventure game. This is where you create your character who goes on to study art. The second pillar of Pixel Art Academy is where it is different than other games about art. You are actually the one, you're actually drawing and painting. Whenever you need to learn something new, you are learning it together with your characters. You're actually getting the real life skills as you play. But there is also this third pillar. And back six years ago, when the Kickstarter campaign for Pixel Art Academy started, I said... But I know not everyone can spend money like this guy here. So the, together with the rest of the world, at the zero dollar reward level, you will already get access to all uh, the educational content. This basically means that if you, for whatever reason, you cannot bag the game, I still want to you for you to be able to use all of the learning materials that are created for this game for free. This week was the sixth anniversary of the Kickstarter, and if you're interested how the first five years went, I made a video last year for the fifth anniversary, so check that out. At the end of that video, I mentioned at the co-living space for game developers, where I moved to last year, we're starting a school for indie game development. The art curriculum that I've been writing for the game will now go both into Pixel Art Academy and the Indie Quest. So for the last one year, I have been also running the Indie Quest, which is a physical school here in Sweden where the Pixel Art Academy curriculum is being used besides helping the participants here and creating the programming curriculum for them. I spent this year writing the freely available drawing learning materials, which are this third pillar of Pixel Art Academy. The result of all of this is the Retropolis Academy of Art Study Guide. The content for the study guide started already back in 2018, but it never actually got released fully. All I did was I shared the drafts. As soon as I got something written, I would share it back to the backers and the community. Unlike the draft articles, the study guide is now its own section of Pixel Art Academy. You will find it on the website of the Retropolis Academy of Art. If you cannot come to study there at the campus by playing the game, the Academy of Art publishes all of their learning materials online in their online study guide. The study guide materials for Pixel Art Academy now get developed in four steps. The first one is the art knowledge map. I went over all of the study guide documents that I wrote so far and mapped it all out and it tries to represent all of the possible learning content that you will be able to do with the game and with the study guide. Step number two is to turn each one of these boxes into an art curriculum. So break it down into learning sections where you use learning materials that cover that area and practical activities that you get to do. Step number three is to turn this art curriculum plan into actual learning materials. This is done through Google Docs, 
which will have a skill increase section where you go use other online learning materials or straight up explanations in the Google Doc and then followed with the important part with the practical missions. These documents are used at the IndieQuest where the questers go through them. I can do any changes if needed and then we come to step number four where all of this content makes it into the Retropolis Academy of Art study guide. The study guide is organized into different books and then every book split down into chapters. Finally, in the chapters you will find different learning sections and activities, which are basically the missions from the Google documents. The great part about the online study guide is that you also get to track your progress through it. In the sections where you just have to read or watch something, all you put is a check mark when you're done with it. But when it gets down to the missions, the activities, you actually have to upload an image of you completing that activity. There is even a submissions folder that you can look at where you will see what other players have sent in. And if you go back to the table of contents, then you will see which of the chapters you have fully completed. All of this tracking is available for free because these are the freely available educational materials. All you have to do is you have to have a Retronator account which you can sign in right there. If you do have Pixel Art Academy, however, and you did create your own character, then in the menu you can switch from you personally to your character. If you complete the activities as your character, they will actually show up inside of the game. If you load up your Pixel Boy in the Study Plan app, you will see that the chapters are basically the goals and activities are tasks in those goals. Okay, so that is what the study guide is. But what about the content? So far we have three books. The first one is Low Resolution Raster Art. I wanted to describe things that are common to the raster art mediums because there is a bunch of things that are the same for all of it, including 2D and 3D. The important part is that it also needs to be low resolution because we could have just a photograph, that's also a raster image, but if we want to be able to manipulate and draw things on the individual elements level, well, we need to have it zoomed up. This doesn't mean that the canvas size needs to be limited. We have plenty of examples of quite big landscapes that are also manipulated on the pixel level or posters of big cities where there's so much going on. But if you look in, you will see that every character just has 10 pixels for their heads. So that is low resolution. In my eyes, it's also not about being digital. You can have things like cross stitch which are an analog physical version of pixel art and you have Legos which could be the physical alternative of voxel art. The point of naming it this way is because there are certain concepts that apply to most if not all of low resolution raster art mediums. The first one is Jaggies, and you can read in the article what kind of stylistic choices we came to fight them, such as the perfect diagonals. Because we work at low resolution, we get to aliasing. More complex structures and shapes get represented all down to the same pixel representation when at low resolution. And again, we have come up with ways to fight against it, one of them being anti-aliasing where we choose to use different colors to represent this difference of shapes of the underlying thing. We also have dithering that came out of the limitation of limited colors. Nowadays you can also use them for putting more texture to materials or just as a stylistic choice. 
and in this chapter you will go and test out different styles of dithering. The other two books that are currently available are all about learning how to draw itself. In particular, the way I go about it is through drawing landscapes. And the landscape sketching book goes from the complete beginnings of even learning how pencils work and being able to sketch things out of the basic shapes, how basic shapes can represent what you see outside in front of your eyes. If you continue with the activities in this book, you will learn how to draw in the details and then shade them with gradients and you will end up with a sketch of a landscape from the side view. You could use it for creating game assets for side scrollers, which is what I covered also in my article on graphical projections, the multi-view one. Now we come to the landscape drawing book, where we are going to accurately represent exactly what we see. There are many ways to go about it. An easy one is to copy the reference with a grid. We also have tracing when you want to be really efficient, but if you ever want to draw things from real life, you won't have those tools available and you really need to use sighting. Here you can see how I incorporate outside existing learning materials from YouTube and other websites and I try to do this as much as possible only when I feel it's necessary or convenient I will write all of the sections on my own. That is the case for the bigger part of the next chapter which is on values because I wanted to really go into a little bit more scientific explanation what is really happening on the physical level of light and explain the terms such as brightness and lightness, values, how do they interconnect? There are subtle differences, so if you want to nerd about this, that's definitely a chapter you should read and at the end you will end up with your own drawing of a landscape. There will also be a landscape painting book that will also go into the colors. And one thing I should mention is that learning how to draw with pencils or painting is going to be useful for other mediums as well, such as pixel art. For example, if you combine the landscape drawing and landscape painting with the low resolution raster art materials, well, now you can draw and paint pixel art landscapes. Like in this example here, I was drawing the island of Hapunui where some of the pixel art academy happens while these three books are right now available in the study guide this is not all of the materials that you can learn from like i said most of the materials are actually prototyped at the indiquest in the google docs from the currently available ones we have our direction and style where you will get to explore your art style or art direction for your game. What kind of elements of art do you have to choose from? Next up is environment concept art, which is all about coming up with your own environments, landscapes, cityscapes, just locations, outdoors, indoors. The Minecraft art materials are a great introduction, a step towards 3D modeling and speaking of 3D modeling we do have 3D modeling materials as well you will go into Blender and create your first low poly models and all the way up to high poly as well yeah and that's it if you wanted to check out these materials for yourself the study guide is available on the Retropolis Academy of Art website I'll definitely leave all the links in the description for the IndieQuest material, you can join the IndieQuest Discord server. The art materials will be slowly coming out over the year, but you can already check out our programming curriculum. If you ever wanted to learn C Sharp and Unity, you will have access to those as well. Everything that I do here at the IndieQuest is given out freely to all of you. 
Finally, if you want to have a behind the scenes look of how it looks like to run a school like this, I have also started a vlog on the Spellflicktvet YouTube channel. So hop on over there if you want to see my thoughts. I post a vlog every two weeks. What kind of things that are going at the school? What am I working on? So maybe I'll see you there. Otherwise, I will see you back here on Retronator when I have some new cool stuff. Probably additions to the study guide or maybe it'll be something else. Who knows? Until then, have a nice time and see you soon. Bye bye.